Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Uichi Greyrep from Salter Spade Science, and today I'm going to be deriving uh, the wave equation used to derive the Schrodinger equation through Maxwell's equations. So this will be the first we're getting into electromagnetism, and in the following episodes of Salter Spade Science, we're going to be getting more into the electromagnetic forces, Maxwell's equations, Faraday's equations, you know, stuff like that before we go on into more quantum mechanics. But I just wanted to, because this is purely mathematic or almost purely mathematical um, derivation, so let's do that. But first, let's start by writing out the Maxwell's equations. So we have the curl of the electromagnetic field, which is represented by E, and the magnetic field is represented by B, just letting you know, is equal to the time derivative of the magnetic field. Okay, that's something we should know. Now, curl of the magnetic field is equal to 1 over C squared or the time derivative that looks really bad of the electromagnetic field okay and now we got crap I messed up um I've never used the I've never used the eraser on this thing before you know that worked a lot better than I thought okay so um I meant to put the divergence or the dot product you know stuff um, math stuff um, of E is equal to zero and then the divergence of the magnetic field is also zero so these are all of Maxwell's equations and these will come in handy especially this one right here because people tend to because you know because it's zero people are like oh yeah it's zero. That I don't know. Um, uh, yes, I kind of threw this off when doing this for the first couple of times, but um, it's important. So let's just jump into it. Okay. So first, we are going to take the curl of the curl curlception of the electromagnetic force. And this is going to equal, because the electromagnetic force is, curl of the electromagnetic force is equal to the negative time derivative of the magnetic force. And we have the same relation over here. This gives us the magnetic force. And we have the scalar, so we can just bring that over here. So that gives us negative 1 c squared. And since we're taking another time derivative, we're going to be doing the second time derivative of the electromag or the uh, electro field. Okay, so I got that. And then we're going to be finding another um, axiom to this equation. And how are we going to do this? Well. There is a vector property that states that this is equal, hold on, to this. Okay? And this is why this right here is important because this, because this over here sets this equal to zero. So that gives us the curlception of the electromagnetic force is just equal to the second gradient of the electromagnetic field. Okay? So because these are two identities of the same expression 
we can set these equal to each other. So let's do that. So down here we're going to have negative 1 over c squared. Um, multiplied by the second time derivative or not. Yeah, second time derivative, right? And this is equal to that. And simple algebra here, here's a part that you guys can do. I'm sure you can do it yourself. So we're gonna add this to both sides, simple algebra. Okay, here's some basic middle school math. And we get, no, 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 crap, I messed up again. Okay. Minus 1 over c squared and this, because we subtract or because we added that that's 0. And this right here is the same wave equation used by Schrodinger to derive his named after equation, the Schrodinger equation. And for those of you who would like to see that, well, I mean, here is a time independent Schrodinger equation. And the main reason why it's time independent and not dependent is because we have the E here, which is the, uh, my mouse isn't moving. Um, well, because, see the E, you know, E psi, yeah, well, that's um, the total energy. And there's another thing that we can use is it's equal to E, except it evolves with time. It's called the, okay, screw that. I'm just using my mouse. I, I was using a pen on this before. I'm not going to anymore. Yeah, but, it, but and we have a thing called the, um, the Hamiltonian operator, which is just, E body that evolves with time, which would make this time dependent Schrodinger equation. That's not really relevant to this whole lesson, but I don't know. Um, eventually, we're going to turn this right here into this right here, or some variant of the Schrodinger equation. There are multiple different ways to write it. Um, you can write it with using, like, completely writing out the potential and the kinetic energy of which are different than classical systems. But we're going to be getting in later after we're done with our electromagnetism. And I've been waiting to get into more advanced stuff. And I'm sorry if you didn't understand most of this because you haven't taken Calculus 3 yet. But... You know, if you guys really wanted me to, I could make math videos on this stuff so you actually know how to do this more complicated math. So make sure to leave suggestions, you know, if you want me to do that. So my name is Yuichi Garrett from Solitaire Speed Gaming. Not gaming, I meant science. Oops. Because I do a lot more videos on gaming than I do on science. I need to start doing more videos on science. Because it's fun. Um, yeah, but I'm uh, Yuichi Garrett from Saltier Spade Science. And